Yeah, Billy. Yeah. Dub City. That's where we at tonight. We're headed there. We're headed there yeah. right now. Uh, I just just uh, checked the phone right now. Uh, these phones are very meaningful, uh, Walt. And uh, <laughs> I, you know, I kind of fell asleep, you know, late in the game, just a tad bit. But I woke up to a text message from my nephew and uh, he did reassure me that the win was secured. It has been put in the W in the uh, yeah, win column tonight. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the other night we had to blame you for the L, but tonight we're not blaming you for the L. Tonight we're going to give you kudos for the dub is what we're doing tonight. Absolutely. Absolutely. Huge game for the Mavericks to get tonight. Uh, geez, take, that I mean, at to take that at Tobosh Tien on Twitter. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, Mr. Handsome you know, Devil. Yeah, well, you know what? Tovash is our guy. That's our guy. But uh, he was wrong about this one. But I think he actually said if uh, the the Nets did not play their guys, which, you know, we kind of anticipated they might do something like that, that the Mavericks will have a better chance. And shout out to them for taking advantage, man. We needed to win. We got to win, Walt. Yes, yes. Yes, we did. And uh, you're right. Kudos, kudos to them. Um you know, without uh, and I said this the, the uh, other night in the studio. Without, if one of them don't play, you got to put your foot on their neck. Go and get it. Go and get Absolutely. the dub. Go get that thing. Absolutely. And they do. And they do. Despite and and we got to see the return of KP. Despite all of the uh, hate that was getting pr placed upon him by uh, a certain guy at Tovas Chino. Get over there and follow that account. As a matter of fact, just get over there and follow that account if you haven't done so already. At Tovas Chino on Twitter. A um, lot of negativity towards Chris Stapps Porzingis. And another thing, if you get a chance, go to the YouTube page and subscribe. I can't stress that enough. BFB, yeah. just type, go to YouTube, type in BFB, DFW, BFB, Mavs, whatever it is, and you'll find us. You'll see us see us up there. Go click on one of the shows. And if you want to watch it, watch it tonight. Once you're done, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be moving over to YouTube pretty soon because Periscope is going away. But, uh, Back to you, Billy. Well, uh, an exceptional night, man. Uh, an exceptional night. I came into the game. I felt like uh, we had a good chance when I found out it was just going to be James Harden and the rest of the guys. Uh, but I did not realize until opening tip-off. Um, I hadn't followed it throughout the day, but I didn't realize until opening tip-off that, you know, our 7-3 guy, uh, KP, was going to be out there and, Man, he came in and Walt, they did exactly what I have been crying for for the longest. Hey, man, get this guy involved early, often, touches, shots. Let him get in the flow of the offense, man, because when he starts doing that, it opens it up for so many other people. And that's what they did. They seemed like they came out with a, and made a concerted effort to get KP the ball. Uh, he right. kept catching good matchups. He was turning around, backing guys down. You know, he still didn't finish as strong as what I like for him to. And I didn't feel like he dominated the way he could have given the lineup that the Nets were using against him. But, man, if he can keep that mentality, well, I'm telling you, this team can do some stuff. They can do some stuff. Just Well, clearly going. clearly they uh, – shout out to Zach. Clearly they, uh, they missed him. He came back and he did his thing tonight. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I need to find uh, out who got that belt in that locker room, though. I need, I need to know. I, it's, it's burning a hole in me because lockdown Luca was in effect tonight. And I need yes, to know if my it, guy got the. I need to know if your nephew got the belt tonight. He deserves it. I, I believe that he should get it. Well, you know what? I was the same guy just last week. I was very critical, and I was very like, critical. "It'll never happen. It'll very never critical. happen." But you nephew ashamed. showed up. To, yeah, you should I am be ashamed. ashamed. Yourself. I am very much so. Yeah, but very he ashamed. Showed up tonight. Yes, 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 he did. 
And uh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just impressed tonight, man. You know, I'm, I'm glad they, you know, they get Porzingis back amid uh, all the trade speculations, which means they probably couldn't find a deal, which is why he's back on the court. Uh, you think that's what it is? Yeah, he's back on the court. They couldn't find a deal. Um, nah. I never bought the back spasm deal for one second. But, you know, uh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, he didn't look stiff out there tonight. I he didn't look stiff to me. No. He didn't look stiff to me at all, Billy. But, you know. No. But but you you know what? Let me say this real quick. I did uh, see a couple of things on Twitter today, and uh, people were saying that maybe the Mavs needed to showcase KP. They might still have something cooking for him. I don't know if this is true or not. But they were just saying maybe we need to showcase him and say, hey, look, he's not hurt. He can play. So if there are any teams that are interested in him, they can, you know, have some tangible evidence to support that he's ready to play and he's not injured. So, you know, take that for what it is or whatever. But he played, you know, he played okay tonight. 18 points, four rebounds. Um, but, well, I, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't say this. KP did, okay. a, tremendous, he did a tremendous job tonight defensively. Uh and like I made a post about it on Facebook. It's not always about how many rebounds you get and how many block shots you have. Sometimes the presence alone of someone 7'3 with that type of wingspan can alter shots. It can make certain passes in the lane a little more difficult. You've got to be able to affect the game even when, you know, your statistics might not show that you have 14 rebounds and three block shots and 30 points, you know. You still have to find ways to affect the game. And I thought KP did a good job of that defensively tonight on top of the offense. Hey, that, that he did. I was just happy to see him back out there. You know, uh, I wanted to kind of put this thing to risk because, uh, like you said, I was one of the people I'm not against uh, Porzingis being here. I uh, think you – I'm one of those guys that, that uh, believes you can't coach height. And when the right. opportunity presents itself, when you have a tall player like that, you got you to gotta let him rock. Now – it, it wouldn't be a good look for the Mavs to get him and then trade him. That's the number one thing. Right. You gave up all that, get him, and then you're going to play him one year, one or two years, and then get rid of him? We got we, yeah, that, we, that, That's turning that roster over stuff that I'm talking about. That's got to stop. It, yeah, that's something that we do not need to be doing at this point. Uh, this team needs to find some level of consistency. We've got to start doing that. And uh, once once we have, man, we'll be okay. We will be okay. Well, uh, give me a second here as I'm sharing sharing the show here with uh, on all of the uh, groups that we're in. Uh, yeah, I'm doing the same thing here, man. If the guys at home are wondering why does this guy keep looking away, it's because I'm working this phone over here and <laughs> navigating a bunch of different stuff. But uh, all right, now uh, I'm ready. All right, yeah, we're good. Oh, my boy Gordon is in the house. That's my guy right there, big time Maverick fan right there. He's got he's there a season go. ticket holder. He's a season ticket holder, uh, Billy. He sits high oh. up there. He's a season ticket holder, though. Oh, there you go. All right, shout out to Gordon tonight, man. Hope you enjoyed this Mavs win just as much as I did. I was calling. Oh, Gordon. I know he I did. It. I know he did. Well, 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 while we got him here, let's get uh, let's get over here to the uh, highlights uh, real quick, Billy. Let's just dive right yeah. in. KP right here. Here he goes right there. There you're giving it to you. Giving it to you guy right there. Yeah. Giving Give it to him down in the paint. Luca. Luca played phenomenal. I like the way Luca, Luca played basketball tonight. He took yeah. his time. He was slow. He didn't rush anything. I liked it tonight. Now, hey, this guy hey, here. He, you know, you know, uh, yeah. you know how I feel about this guy right here. I know you yeah. like to think I like to rep 713. <laughs> yeah, un unfortunately, unfortunately, I do know how much you like it. <laughs> hey, I'm just uh, saying, yeah. I'm just saying, a man, a man can go to the strip club, uh, uh, a man can go to the strip club and get fat and drop 44. He can play on my team any day of the week. <laughs> there goes your guy, hey. Josh Mitchell, with no kick doors acting right there. Hey, no, he it's Mike Bassey. There you <laughs> go, Mike. What's up, man? Glad to have you. Look at step back here, three. Booyah! In your face. And here it goes right here. This is the point I was like, I hope Billy's watching because he needs to tell his nephew to get off of him. He probably shouldn't stick James Harden one-on-one. -on -one. But I but I like, I applaud him for stepping up and taking the challenge tonight. 
Although it did yeah. not end well whenever he did do. Oh, there goes. You want to talk about Tim? You want to give him well, some love tonight? Yeah, yeah, Timmy played all right tonight, man. I think he finished with uh, 13 points, I want to say, if I was looking at the box score correctly. I think he had 13, but he had a couple of timely shots, man. And uh, Timmy stepped up and guarded James Harden. It didn't really work well for him either, uh, especially in the first half. Uh, James Harden but, James Harden is the best scorer in the NBA today. <laughs> it's not. It doesn't matter who you put on him. Uh, there, There is a guy on his same team that probably a little bit better. But uh, Mr. Durant, Mr. Durant is, is a is a prolific. Durant is, is no a better shoot. Durant's a better shooter. Might be a better. No, I only think he's better shooting than Harden right now. Right now, he's not. Uh, that could be that could be argued. I understand what you're saying. I think KD. I mean KD. I'm sorry. I think James Harden can score more ways. I'm not sure James Harden has a mid range jumper though. Have you ever seen him shoot one? He shoots. He he's a scorer. He can shoot anytime he wants. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying, when was the last time you seen him shoot a mid range jumper? I see KD do it. I see. Uh, do it all over. I, I, he listen. He led the league three years in a row in scoring. He he's doing something. <laughs> but but you're but you're you're refusing to answer our question. The people at home want to know. I don't. I don't. Shot a I, I, don't, I, don't I, I don't know it. I don't care. <laughs> I can't see it. I, his game is getting to the lane, scoring at the basket, which is fine. Look at that. He and got he a. He's got a, back I tell you what, he does that three point. When he hit that floater on him, when he come in there and hit that floater, watch right here. He just step back. Boom! Come on, man. What are we doing? What are you doing? Why are you? Why are you doing this to the people right now? You got Mike Baskin here giving us credit. <laughs> hey, hey, Mike Baskin is giving us credit for this for this post game show, and here you go and and try to poo poo about trying to say, oh well, James Harden, you don't hit that man's led the league in scoring three years in a row. I'll give no, you I, I understand. Two, no, two I understand. He I'm, makes. Just, I'm just saying you you were telling me that he's the best scorer in the league. Okay, and, and best. I mean, hands down. Okay, look at my guy. My guy, Kurt. I think. My guy Kirk says, "Uh, he can't, KD can't create like James." Yeah, no, he can't. He doesn't. Cre he doesn't, he also doesn't create the turnovers like James either. You know what, okay. man? You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, just speaking truth here. Give me, look, look at that. That's two right there. There, you want to know where he gets the two point? There they go, right there. Did you see that? Do I need to rewind yeah, that, that back was, for that you? Was cute. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. It was, it was you cute. ought to be ashamed of yourself. And here comes hey. KP finally shooting over people like I want him to. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> in that paint, shoot over him. Here we go again. Put that ball over him and get that. They too little for you. This Don't get that. Should have been doing the whole time. Yeah. Hey, you know, hey, while these highlights are going, I mean, the people are watching and everything, and this is this is great. Uh, Mike brought up a very good question here, man. When healthy, are we going to pick the Philadelphia 76ers or the Brooklyn Nets as the better team? Uh, Who's I'm the taking team to the when healthy. I'm taking Philadelphia 76ers. Over the Nets when healthy? Yes, yes. Did you and, see that defense? That? They, did you see that defense they played? Number one, uh, Brooklyn. Who, Brooklyn the better. Uh, yeah. Y'all got y'all got uh, had one guy that they had to worry about. Yeah, but your nephew couldn't do anything the other night. Your nephew yeah, couldn't do anything. Now. Yeah, but there's a difference in having to check Harden, Kyrie, and KD all at the same time. There's a big difference in that. No, no I'm just saying the the Brooklyn. I'm sorry. F Brooklyn needs to sign a big man for me to take them serious in the playoffs. Right now, I can't. But look at you it. Like you, you got look at that. It, that. You know what? Brooklyn had the no rebound clock going in the uh, in the third <laughs> quarter. They, they had to because they don't have big men. <laughs> oh god! Oh god! Now, now look what you did. Isn't it funny when my guy can't wait? Because if you ever saw me, crack, wasn't he in the studio? So I think I'm done with KP. Oh. Uh, 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 now you're back on the bandwagon. This guy right here. Hey, this guy, he Mr. Azad. That's Mr. Azad. why you're my guy. That's why you're my guy. You're a smart <laughs> man. You're a very smart man out of you. Yeah, you know, both of you ought to be ashamed. So Jalen Brunson here, he had an awesome night tonight. 14 yeah, points. Still thinks he needs to be starting. Me and Tovash keep arguing back and forth about that, but that's fine. Whatever. Joe Harris did not get going, did not get going tonight at all. I was really shocked by this. Yeah, he well, he had a little uh, string and there. He hit a couple of threes like back to back, but yeah, for the most yeah, part, he man, he was, wasn't good. It wasn't enough. Yeah, this is this is a nice play right here by Dodo. I liked it. That I think at this yeah. point they were just pouring it on him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think KP got back in the game after maybe like the the early part of the fourth quarter. Did he even play in the fourth quarter? Who's that? I'm trying to remember. Uh, KP. 
Because I know he sat like the majority of it. Uh, no, I think at that point they started rolling Dwight Powell out. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't. James Harden played a little bit, then they went ahead and set him. Yeah. Shout out to the Mavericks. Held James Harden to four points in the second half after a 25 first po- uh, first half, 25 point first half explosion. Uh, held him to four points in the second half. That's that. Uh, mm-hmm. That's that great score you were telling me about. I refuse. I refuse to believe that Mr. Durant would have had that type of uh, response. I'm just saying. Wow. I'm just saying. Wow. Hey, wow. I'm just saying. I mean, he so, still ended up with 29. So. Yeah. I mean, just saying. Yeah, but you lost by damn near 20. I mean, so that's, that's you know, and I'm not saying Jay Tarn is a good basketball player. I'm just ragging on him right now. He played very well. But, and, you know, most nights you don't have an answer for him. But the three ball wasn't falling for him. And that's what I'm saying. Walt, when his three isn't falling, he tends to fall in love with it. And he'll get it up and up and up. And he's, he'll try to shoot his way out of a bad shooting night. Uh, Are you talking about James from, Harden? Yeah, from James, yeah, James Harden. James Harden usually when James Harden usually when that's going on, you know what he does? He's smart enough to know to get himself uh to the free throw line. Yeah, yeah, he'll get himself from the free throw line to get himself going. That's one thing I that's one thing I always give him. That's one thing he will do. Um now we just saw the highlights now. Uh let's look at some numbers here. Sha- while shall you, we? Yeah, while shall you're we pulling that up, I'm looking at yeah, while you're pulling that up, I'm looking at these comments, man. Mr. Basic is uh He's giving us a lot. I don't know if he. I don't know if he's trying to credit KP or if he's diminishing KP right now. I don't know what's going on here. Well, uh, he here, says here. the Mavs five hundred this year without KP and five hundred with them. Well, here, 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 I'm with. I'm with. BS equals back spasms. I'm, I'm kind of with Zach on this one. I'm not buying it. I don't buy the back spasms deal at all. I don't buy it. Hey. hey. Our, our, our uh, friend Chris Arnold told us about what you're trying to do here, man. I just advise you to go ahead and stop while you're ahead. There's no reason to to lead the people down the path that you're trying to take them right now, man. Just I mean, I mean, Chris Ar- Chris Arnold, he, he he was just hating on me the other night. You know, I painted <laughs> I painted him I painted him into a corner. You know, I was really I was really upset that a guy like Chris Arnold reduced himself to name calling <laughs> regarding me. I was really I was really taken back by that. He, he did go for you on that, man. Yeah, Shout out I mean, to that's, Chris Arnold. and that's fine. I mean, if you want to refer to me as clickbait, you know, that's fine. You can <laughs> call me whatever. Uh, you know, you can call me a lot of things. Just don't call me broke. That's all I ask. Don't call me broke. <laughs> don't call me broke. <laughs> that's where the fight starts at. Yeah, but, uh, I hear you, man. Let's look at some numbers here. Dodo, getting better. Mike Bassey, you're going to love this. Dorian Finney-Smith, 12 points, 8 rebounds tonight and 35 minutes. I like it. I'll take Dodo's that. back. Dodo's I'll back. Dodo's back. I like it. Dodo's back. And did a good job defensively. Uh, Maxi, not so much. Right around pace, six points. And it's more of a defensive game for him tonight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Richard, Richard, KP was just getting healthy in some of those games. Okay, all right. I, I mean, I still think they were trying to trade him, but you know, I hey Richard, I'll go with that. I, I can accept that, Rich. But I, will I, think he's, I think he's more so talking about just, you know, a lot of those games that he was missing, not so much his recent stint, but, you know, the ones before that when they were 7-7 seven and seven and he didn't play well. I mean, I mean, way back. I mean, but they did have a week off from playing uh, basketball, from playing basketball, eight it's days to be exact, and yeah. he still kind of didn't play, so oh, whatever, 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 whatever. So uh, yeah, Dodo twelve points, Maxi Cleaver six. Now Chris Sports Inc. gave you eighteen and four. How do you feel about that? Eighteen and four. Um, it wasn't a bad night. I felt like there were he, uh, KP could have definitely gave you more offensively, uh, but I do think that uh, you know he you know he missed a couple of chip shots, some jumpers that I think he would normally hit. I think he could have easily gave you twenty five, but. Four rebounds defensively is kind of concerning to me. I mean, I don't, you know, for the time you play, I mean, you're seven three. I kind of figure you would, on the app, on the worst of worst nights, I feel like you should give me at least eight rebounds. So four was pretty disappointing tonight. But uh, we're not going to sit there and harp on that after a win, you know. But uh, I like to see more. I need to see at least, at absolute minimum, eight rebounds from my seven three guard slash forward slash center. My uniform 
I need at least eight rebounds on on the worst of worst nights. Uh, can you hear me? Gordon, Gordon said he couldn't hear me, but I want to uh, make sure. Yeah, I, I saw his comment. I can hear you very well, but uh, I'm not sure okay. what's going okay. on over there. <laughs> oh, come on, Mike. <laughs> 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 he, he's not gonna let him make it, man. No, 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 no. Let's get back to the numbers. Uh, Luca, twenty-seven point six, uh, six rebounds. Nice game for Luca. Nice yeah. game for Luca. One turnover, uh, Walt. One turnover tonight. Well, you know, he had a lot of. He played. He had a lot of job to do playing defense. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, for him to handle the ball as much as he did and only have one turnover, I thought that was pretty good for Luka Doncic. You know, thought he played at a good pace tonight. Uh, your guy, Kick Doris, he did not have him on tonight. But uh, he gave you 11 points. Had two rebounds, three assists. Nothing really to brag about. Yeah, I mean – I, I don't. I don't have him here for scoring. At least I don't. I. I think I want him to go. Well, wait a minute. Well, hold on, hold on. He better be here for something because you gave up Seth Curry for him. So well, he yeah. better do something. Well, I mean, yeah. You know, I expect him. My my main thing I want for Josh Richardson. Yes, I want some points, but at the same time, we all know what we brought him here for was defense. I don't care what we subbed him for. We brought him here for defensive purposes, and if he can make it difficult on other teams' best score, scoring guard or point guard, um, I'll, I'll take that, man. I don't have to have 18 points a night from him. It's great to get it, but if I don't get that, man, if I get 11, 12 points, I got other guys you to need, score. I, I, I'm sorry. You bought him here. He better have 18. He better have 18 points a night. Same anywhere from 17 to 20 points a night. Well, he's you not have a guy like that. Well, okay, then why did you bring him here? Because you need him for the other side of the ball that Seth Curry does not bring you. Okay, but offense was not the offense is still not the issue here in Dallas. It's defense. Offense is the the issue because they got mopped off the floor because of uh, not not scoring enough points. Just like the game in Philly game, they didn't have anybody else they could turn to. So Seth Curry was going to be the difference in that game against Philly. Oh yeah, he he's averaging what about forty or fifty. Uh, uh, he's he's in the percentage of 450 uh, shooting threes right now. That, that that means absolutely nothing to me. I'm I'm asking is he is Seth Curry the difference in that game against the Saints? He's he's not. Seth is going to score off of open shots created. That's fine. You know, Josh we're, Richardson isn't the shooter. We're a three. Wait a minute. We're a three point shooting team. You almost got to have somebody and somebody. You got to have somebody who can shoot threes. You yeah, need I three mean, Andy. You need three and D guys. Well, well, I mean, yeah, you're right. Well, I mean, uh, Richardson is giving us a three. You know, I get yeah, but it. He, but he's giving us and uh, no put no uh, no homo, but he's giving us a D. But we ain't getting the three. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to sub something. Down, I'm sorry, it's, Luc- it's my buddy Lucius say pause, pause. Yeah. <laughs> he's giving us a D. He's giving us the D, but he ain't giving us the three. Hey. We, we can't have that. We need both. Well, well, I mean, hey, you, you get there's not too many guys in the league that can give you three and D. Well, here's the thing: a guy that you kill, you and EA kill, who don't want to give him his props after looking at his number, he's giving you three and D, and that's Tim Hardaway. But you don't well, want to talk about that, do you? I, I do like Timmy, man. I don't know why you make it seem like I don't, I don't know. Like yeah, Hardaway. I don't know. You, I don't think you. I don't think you do. I just told you, Tim, I just like it when he's consistent. <laughs> I, saw, man. I, I did not hate Josh Richardson. Yes, he does. Yes, he does, Mike. Thank you for bringing that to <laughs> Peter's attention. Yes, he does. Yes, I don't hate Josh Richardson. Yes, I don't hate Josh Richardson. Yeah, he wants saying, Seth Curry back so bad. That's oh, fine. He back. But he, he never come back to Dallas as long as Rick Carl out here. <laughs> hey. That is not happening. Uh, he won't have no option if he gets traded here. You I can mean, forget about that. You can forget about that. Now here, here's a good point right here. What we were talking about the other night, uh, paying Tim, paying T, uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. Now mm-hmm. listen, we're gonna pay Tim, but Tim's gonna have to understand he ain't starting no more. He's gonna be the sixth man. If he's willing to accept Ooh. that, pay him, pay him. Okay. So we so on the way THJ comes back is with the understanding you're gonna be the sixth man. You will be Jason Terry going forward. Yeah, and once he okay, if he if he can do that, then we got it. Okay. 
I wouldn't be opposed to that. Yeah, but I, I, any, I think uh, Mike said he's already paid, but he's getting he's getting uh, he's gonna want another contract. I think he was in opting year, so I think this is last year of his deal. Yeah, it is. If, if I so if he to pay him back, you know, you're gonna be the sixth man. Ooh, Mike says he's a twelve man. Hey. Uh, here's here's Mo. This is Moten right here, dear basketball guy. Thanks for blessing me with the understanding of yourself. Told y'all Boston and New Jersey victory. That's our friend that's Alex Moten. Yeah, that's Moten. He did call it. Yeah, he did. Yeah, shout out. To had, him, man. He did call it. All I had, all I had him down for was the uh, was the Boston win. I didn't have him going for the Brooklyn win. Hey. Well, I mean, we got it, man. We'll take it for what it is. Doesn't matter how it came about. Oh, yeah. come on, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of wasted money going on right here. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You agree with that statement? You, Mr. Dwight Powell guy? Well, well, I mean, Dwight Powell doesn't give me enough to where he should be making that amount of money per year. You know, I, you know, no, I don't. I mean, if, if Timmy's making 18 and Dwight's making, you know, two thirds of that and he's not giving you that same type of production, then, yeah, I think he's overpaid. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I can admit to that. I mean, that's but again, that's a cap management issue. That's not Dwight Powell's issue. I just need you to give me energy plays and give me six hard fouls and a couple of easy dunks. That's all I need. I mean, this is the same organization that paid uh, Wesley Matthews extra money because he was loyal and not yeah. leaving. After the whole uh, uh, DeAndre Jordan fiasco, I remember that. Yeah, what uh, wasted money? Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, when well, you got it, I guess. But they, what's the old saying? It ain't tricking if you got it, man. The Mavericks love tricking off money. Yeah, but they could have used that extra. What they? I think they gave him like extra two mil. Could have gave. Yeah. Could have took that. Uh, could have took that. What's the name? That money and gave it to somebody else and got somebody an, another player. There's mm -hmm. a whole arc on THJ value in the NBA. He's slightly above average. Ten million is an average player. Uh, I would, I would, if I could get Tim back for twelve, I'd get him. If I can get him for twelve to come off the bench, I'll take it. Hmm. But I can't pay him any more than that. Okay, no more than twelve. Usually, usually I don't like counting people's chips, but you know, in this scenario, to get Tim Hardaway back. I'm not gonna pay you guy 15 mil to come off the bench, but I can pay you 12. That, that's gonna be tough to ask him to go from 18 to 12, man, because some team well, out there will pay him. Well, he's gonna hey, 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 this is like the Cowboys. He's gonna have to understand we need his money to re, to build the team. You know, we can't pay you 18 to be coming off the bench, pal. Yeah, I mean, that's true. That's true. I mean, I'm gonna need we're gonna need to exhaust those funds, you know. Give give it, we'll give you 12. Oh God! Don't even mention that. Mike just brought up something that just stabbed me in the chest right there. Oh, the James now Johnson. You, well, see, no, he traded no. for James Johnson, but uh, yeah. so we we just absorbed we absorbed that contract. Yeah. No, we're talking about the us choosing Delon Wright and uh, Dwight Powell over Julius Randle. <laughs> Mike's never going to let that go. <laughs> Do you understand how silly that makes us look? Mike is never gonna let that one go. As well, he shouldn't. Mike, I'm with you 100. percent That that was. That's not good front office. That's not that's not what we need to be doing. That's not managing what we have. I don't know. I'm, I I got the interviews now. I'm about to uh, put them on here in, in a second. But um, uh, it doesn't look like Rick Carter. I'm, maybe they just haven't loaded up yet, but. I am not seeing Rick Carlisle post game uh, press conference. Inter hmm, interesting. Well, I, I got I don't know. right now. Right now, I have Luca, Dodo, and uh, Tim Hardaway. Hmm. That's hmm. interesting. Wonder what, wonder what Rick's problem is today. They Come might. On, just, they might. They might just not have it up yet. Yeah. I imagine that's exactly what it is. Man, I did want to bring up something about the Mavericks tonight, man, and, uh, and Jalen Brunson. Uh, I think Van Gundy had made mention of it during the broadcast about Jalen Brunson just kind of uh, the little backstory about him, uh, his dad playing for the Chicago Bulls, you know, back in the day and all that different type of stuff. 
And they were really showing him a lot of love. And I'm starting to notice on the national broadcast, the few that we've had over the past couple of weeks, man, they are showing – I think the NBA is starting to be uh, – or they're starting to become aware of who Jalen Brunson is on a much bigger scale. And I think that might make it kind of hard to hide him uh, going forward, uh, just in terms of, like, other teams wanting him and inquiring about him. He's a damn good basketball player, Walt. I don't think we always give him enough credit. But he's a damn good basketball player for this team. Wait, hold on. I got to do that again. I forgot to share audio. Yeah, Jay, hey, listen, you know how I feel about Jalen Brunson. You know exactly how I feel about him. Yeah, he's a damn good I, basketball player. I, I think that he should be starting, you know, despite what other people might say uh, that join us on the show. Yeah. You oh, know. Okay. All right, they got they got Rick loaded up. They got Rick. Oh, they got him on there. They got him on there now. All right, let me download his interview. But uh, I guess before we go to Rick, I'll get over here and go to Luca real quick. I got to share screen because it said the foul was too big. Yeah. Do they not ever interview KP after these games? Uh. Yeah, he could he could be on there. He could be uh, he'll get an interview, but you know some sometimes he just doesn't do it. I know it seems like every time we do a game, it's always it's never him. He has done yeah. a couple of them. I like to hear what he has to say. Why do you want to hear? Do you want to hear about how uh, how he's well, been? Well, I, I want to hear what he has to say, but I, I tell you what I also want to find out. I know they had mentioned during the broadcast, you know, KP got upset about something, and they said he kicked the cooler or a chair or something. They said, I, I did not see that. I didn't quite understand what was going on there. I just heard them say it. Does anybody have any update on that? Oh, uh, wait a minute, man. We got highway robbery tonight. Oh, uh, should got the belt. That is bull crap. Lucas should have got the belt tonight. That is a load of crap. Who's making these? Who's making these decisions up top? Is who's that, making these decisions? Lockdown Luca was in a lockdown. Luca was in effect tonight, and we didn't even get it. I'm gonna have to write right. a letter to somebody. All right, hold on. Let me uh, let's let's see if we can get this here. Look, uh, uh, on TV after the game, you said uh, we played like a team tonight. Can you elaborate what you mean by that? And um, you know, do you feel like there's been to me nice when you guys have not played like a team this year. I mean, just play like a team, you know, everybody involved, everybody uh, doing the effort, uh, you know, on defense, on offense, just play like a team. Okay, Callie. Hey, Luca. Uh, Coach Carlisle said before the game that you and Jalen have a really good trust between you two. How have you guys developed that over the past few years and what makes your on court chemistry work so well? Oh uh, yeah, uh, I mean he's a really good, good player, you know. Uh, you can see it. Uh, he's uh, he's everywhere, and we have a good chemistry. You know, we were both drafted on the same day, and but you know he's a great player, and it's easy to have a chemistry like that. I like Dorothy. Luca, hi. Um, what has fueled your improvement as the season has progressed? What's been the fuel or the catalyst? What do you mean by that? What what has fueled, what has made you uh, improve as you have throughout the season? What's been the, the, the catalyst? I would just say playing basketball, you know, that's what I like to do, uh, especially when we win, you know, it's fun. And, you know, just that, just playing basketball. Kevin? Hey, Luca, congrats on the win and a happy early birthday tomorrow. Um, Tonight, obviously, the defensive assignment against James Harden. Talk about what you guys were able to do in the second half, holding him to just four points and holding the Nets to 34 points in the second half and the adjustment you guys made on him. I mean, he's a great player, you know. Uh, obviously, they had two great two great players out, but he's an amazing player. It's very tough to stop him. Uh, we did a great job in the second half. I think it was way better. Uh, just, I think, more aggressive, you know. Doro did a... Did a Great, amazing job, and uh, you know, just be more aggressive. Okay, last one in English, Tim McMahon. Luca, uh, James Harden on on their Zoom tonight said uh, that the Mavs have a special one talking about you. 
What does that kind of respect mean from guys who've, who've been an MVP in this league, who you know, are kind of the established superstars in this league? I mean, it's amazing. You know, it's something you even can't describe, you know, uh, if somebody like that says something about you. It's just amazing. I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, I watch him. He's an unbelievable player. And, you know, it's just uh, really special. Okay, we'll do two in Spanish. Leonardo? Luca, ¿qué tal? Buenas noches. Te saluda Leonardo Torres desde Perú. Did you hear my guy giving him kudos right there? Did you hear my guy did, giving him kudos? You got you didn't have anything you didn't you have anything to say about that? I know you you hate on uh one of my guys, James Harden, right there. Oh no, I mean I mean he's speaking the truth. I mean, I think I think across the league it's understood and it's recognized. Luka Doncic is a very, very special talent in this league, and the Mavericks are very fortunate uh, to have him, and uh, hopefully they'll continue to put pieces around him that will help him, man, and help him go to a next level, and, man, we got to get a championship here to Dallas, man. It's not every day. These guys don't just grow on trees, you know, so we need to be utilizing his, his best efforts and, and maximizing it, you know, and we need to really start trying to get on that, but shout out to James Harden for being honest, and uh you know, when he's not in the strip club throwing money, see uh, there you go. He's being you honest. Just, he's being you honest. just can't get out of it. You just hey. can't get out of it, King. Look, man, you just can't look, let it go. I just, just have to always go. speak the truth. I'm speaking for the people, man. I just can't for the people. let it go. You know, you just can't rise. You just can't rise above the hate. Is what you can't do. You have this <laughs> and have the ability to rise above the hate. It's what you can't do, man. Yeah, you know what? As as Judge meant to say, I went to school with your kind of people. I went to school with your kind of people. <laughs> All right, hey, let's, hear what hate, man. Let's, let, let's hear what uh, Rick has to say real quick. Uh, KP was terrific. He had good bounce. He had surprisingly good rhythm for a guy that hadn't played in 10 days. Um, but his rim protection and defense was the best that it's been all year. Um, it just shows the amount of work that he's been putting in over the last 10 or 11 days. Um, Luca was terrific. You know, I thought Brunson was had made made timely plays all night long, but the key to the game obviously was our second half defense. You know, the guys uh, guys decided at halftime that that you know we need to get together and uh, and really concentrate defensively. We had defense in front of our bench in the second half, and uh, you know they did a great job. Um, Jamal Mosley, who runs our defense. Did a great job communicating with the team, keeping those guys all tied together. And, uh, you know, look, I know they're down a couple of superstars, but to hold them to 18 and 16 in the second half is uh, is pretty damn good. Um, let me see what other questions I can answer. Okay. I guess that's it for now. Okay, so we'll see if Brad has something new. Well, you did answer. Pretty much all the questions. Luca on TV just said uh, you guys played like a team tonight. Would you say this is one of your better team performances? Well, in the last two and a half minutes of the first half and the entire second half, we played together as well as we have all year. Yes, um, and it was it was great to see. So. Um, you know, two more games left, both tough games. Um, we we need more of the same. Um, we need more of the same from everybody. Uh, Tim McMahon. Hey, Rick. Uh, what would, how would you describe what you need from Porzingis on a consistent basis? Well, tonight I, I thought he gave us everything. Um, I don't know if he made a three. Uh, he didn't make a three, but, uh, you know, offensively, we need, we need spacing, cutting, rolling into the lane for plays, you know, deep in the paint. Uh, he made some great and ones. He made a couple of great passes out for great looks at, at three for teammates. Um, and, you know, defensively tonight, you know, he was, he was, uh, he was all over the place. Um, you know, officially here, they have him for 
three block shots. It, it's, it felt to me like he had five or six because he was changing a lot of, a, a lot of the shots. And if you watch the game closely, um, and if you've been watching our previous games closely, he's in, he's in much more of a, of a pronounced defensive stance tonight. And uh, it's just the work that he's put in, um, you know, with, uh, with Jeremy and with Valdi and, uh, and Casey. And, uh, you know, our practice time last, last week was very valuable. It was unfortunate that he, his, his back stiffened up a little bit, but, uh, but he really looked good out there tonight. Coach, hi. What went into the decision not to really stagger uh, KP and Luca, especially in that first half? And also, who won the defensive uh, player belt tonight? Uh, Dorian Finney-Smith won the belt tonight. Um, and look, sometimes there's games where you just don't go by the book. Um, this This appeared to be one of them early on, you know, uh, Josh got two, Jay Rich got two quick fouls, which got Luca back in there quickly. Um, we rested him at the beginning of the second. And, you know, I haven't looked at the lineup analysis, uh, but the lineup that we had out there without Luca and without KP was very effective and did a great job. And when you can have that luxury um, in a game against this caliber of an opponent, that's, that's a big deal, you know. So um, what I'm finding, you know, is that – you know, we got a lot of guys on this roster that do a lot of a lot of different things that are very good. Um, it's not necessarily going to be, uh, you know, an absolute that we need to have one one of those two guys in the game. Although that that is the preference. Christian, hey, coach, how's it going? Uh, Christian Winter here with the New York Daily News. Got two questions for you that you didn't answer in your opening monologue, I guess. Um, first. Can you kind of summarize how you've seen Chris Sapp grow from the moment he got traded from the Knicks to the Mavericks to now? Uh, and the second question would be, do you think there are, there is any credence to those who say that James Harden and Luka Doncic have some similarities in their game? Yeah, I mean, look, if you've been through, if, if any of us had been through what KP's been through in the last three and a half years, um, you, know, you would experience a tremendous amount of growth because of all the challenges, the challenges of a major injury, the challenges of a major trade, um, you know, all those kinds of things. Uh, we love KP. I mean, he's just, just a very unique player. I, I've never seen a 7-3 guy does what he does. Um, and tonight it was, it was all on display, you know, so um, – and it's great to see, you know, when he's when he's feeling good out there, there there he there's a joy in how he moves and how he moves the ball and how he finds his teammates and how he cuts and, and just plays the game. Um, and that was great to see. You know, and his and his teammates did, went a long way toward enabling that tonight. So um, you know, that was terrific. And are there similarities with Harden and, and Doncic? Yeah, there's similarities for sure. You know, both of these guys are you know, they're great one-on-one -on -one players. Um, they're great passers. They can both play the team movement game very well. Um, you know, Harden has been in a situation the last few years where, you know, the offense, you know, has really revolved around him. And, and our team, it does around Luca uh, similarly, but our style is, is a little different than Houston and, and Brooklyn, you know. So, um, but, you know, both of these guys are generational type players. Um, there's no question about it. And uh, so, you know, that, that's another thing that makes a game like this very compelling. So you noticed that all the questions were about KP, huh? Yep. That's all as they, they should have asked about. As they should have been, right? Yeah, I guess so. People no, Car no Carlisle No Carlisle usually doesn't talk that much. That was a long press conference by Carlisle. <laughs> yeah. After a game. I never seen him talk that much. Yeah. People want to know about KP, and rightfully so. Everybody wants to get down to the bottom of it. Was he hurt? Was he this, that, and the other? 
We'll never know the truth, guys. We'll never know the truth. You can assume what you want. All we need to know is that he's on the uh, – uh, <laughs> he's out there playing. So Somebody take uh, Zach's phone away from him, man. He's he's out here cutting up in the comments right now. <laughs> somebody get, somebody get, his, get his phone. Take it away from this guy. Uh, so, uh, the Porzingis, Porzingis talk, uh, where, 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 uh, <laughs> all right, yeah, take hey. this phone away. Take yeah, phone. Hey, you're going to have to get off our guy, CA, man. You have to get off our guy. Oh, no, forget that. He called me clickbait the other night. I, I'm done with him. He came, he came at, he came for me just because yeah, I pinned him into a, just because I did. pinned him into a corner. With the question that I asked, which I thought was a very good question. It was Mark, a good Cuban, question. Mark Cuban did not refer to Chris Porzingis as a lifer like he did Luka Doncic on the G-Bag Nation. And I want to know why that is, because if you believe in a guy, you go out of your way and say, no, that guy is he's here. We're not trading him. We will never trade him or something like that. You need to say something to reassure me that your KP is not getting traded. And I don't feel like he did that uh, with this. Oh, well, it didn't happen, you know. You Still guys, waiting to hear man. from Donnie. Still you waiting guys, to hear from Donnie. Listen, you uh, guys are going to strain your eyes and need glasses and, and need, like, bifocals far before your time by reading between the lines so much, man. You guys have got to slow down with that, man. Just well, relax. I, as I told Chris Arnold, I'm a quality broadcaster. What am I supposed to do? This is part of quality broadcasting, okay? I have to dig deep and investigate things. Uh, Billy, J Jerry Jones said, I do not believe in firing a coach mid season. He okay. He, he said, he never said that he wouldn't know. He said, I don't believe in doing it. And he fired Wade Phillips in mid season. Okay. It happens. Yeah. You just got to, you got to listen to these guys' words. Listen to them. Uh, okay. All right. Well, hey, we'll, we'll listen to it. They say the KP is going to be here. I guess all the time we'll, we'll know here. What? I think it's March 25th. If yeah, March 25th rolls around. It's a trade. The Gordon. Yeah. Gordon, the trade deadline is March 25th. Yep. Yeah. I still think they were trying to shop him last week, though. I think they had I think they had that Brook, I mean that uh Golden State deal on the table and was like, we might need to take a look at this. <laughs> well, you know, well, let me let me just ask this real quick, and I will, you know, throw this out there to uh the people who are watching right now. Uh is it necessary? Are we putting too much into the fact that the Mavericks may have been shopping KP around? Isn't that what they're supposed to do? They, I mean, Ben Gundy made a good point tonight. He was like, this is part of their job. They're supposed to always look for ways to better their team. team. Even when it comes to James Harden. If James Harden, if there's a way to move James Harden, as great as he is, this is what, what Ben Gundy was saying. And I put a lot of value in what he has to say. He says, even if it's James Harden, if there's a way to, you know, get better by moving him, why not? Why are we so offended by trying to do that? If there, if we can legit get better, why are we upset about that? Why is it such okay. a big deal? Uh, well, it's, it's it's a big deal because if it happened, then why are we saying it didn't happen? Well, I mean, we don't we don't know we don't know if it happened. We do not. That's know. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, though. I, as I've told you, uh, well, as I've told EA before, uh, reports like that don't just fall out of thin air. They don't just get they don't they don't get created like that just just out of thin air. Okay, the guy the guy who brought it up had had some stake and and had some weight on that. And he was he's not the only person that confirmed it. It was some it was other people confirmed it too. But yeah, I, I think when it when it comes to that type of thing, though, I do think we have to be very careful because I think sometimes for the sake of pushing a certain narrative things can get tangled and twisted it might have not been in that exact context that's why yeah. i'm always big about kind of i still think donnie i still think donnie was working behind the scenes without uh <laughs> without mark without, mark's here. <laughs> without mark's knowing it was what it was like got busted <laughs> hey but why why are you trading the guy that you just traded for one uh after one year what is the is the question that comes around here because it's like you traded for him and gave up draft picks, and now you want to get rid of him already? No, nah, that, that don't well, seem well, right. I mean, well, I mean, yeah, may, maybe not, but, I mean, you don't know what's on the table. I mean, we don't. What, if freaking LeBron James, maybe not LeBron at this point in his career, but freaking LeBron James came available or something. Yeah, yeah you still take LeBron I, at this point in his career. 
Yes, you do. Okay, well, okay. So I'm saying, so I'm not concerned about how recent he got here. If there's an opportunity to get better, I'm going to get better. Period. Well, I think that's the okay. Way we look at it. Well, yeah, but you told us that it was going to be K. It was going to be Luca and Porzingis, and now after one year, you're saying, okay, we need to trade him. So that means you're either you there's something about him that concerns you that you're not bought or sold in on. Because mm -hmm. you don't trade a guy, and then after he didn't play when he got here, he came back, he played, the season stopped, and then he got hurt. And now you come back the next year and say he didn't play a couple games in the beginning of the year, but he comes in, he balls, and then you say, I don't want him anymore? That means something's going on. And yeah. uh, I, share, I shared with you uh, – uh, I shared with you – Tobosh and EA, a post that I got from NBA Central earlier right. on uh, Twitter that said, the problem isn't Porzingis, it's his brothers. His mm -hmm. brothers are creating a problem. And I told you in the studio the other day, I said, I bet you it's not the Mavericks or Porzingis that's stirring up anything. I bet you it's his brother that's stirring some stuff up. Mm -hmm. And and that's what's going on. And I see that report. But wonder why. But that came from an agent who said that about his brother. Right. He said they're, they're, I don't know, I can't, I don't have a direct quote. I think he said they're like monsters or something. Yeah, he said they're cancers. Yeah, they're cancers. He's talking about the brothers. Porzingis' brother. But he put an S on it, so I guess it's more than one brother. Yeah, I mean, you know, who knows, man? I mean, and that, that's the thing I think people want, the fans want to get away from that, man. We just want to know, okay, we got a guy who's 73 who can play basketball. We know what he can do or whatever when healthy. We just want him to play basketball and, and okay, not here, worry about here, all the extra stuff. Here it is. It says his brother's agent is because in a our cancer. You don't want that. There's a reason every team wants to trade him sooner rather than later. Mm. It's what is what the what the agent says. Yeah. NBA agent on Christos Porzingis is what is uh so that came from an agent directly saying that. Yeah. Well, the, those guys would have the insight. Uh, so I can definitely kind of roll with that if that's what they're throwing out there. I mean, you know, I just want KP to play basketball, man. I mean, all that extra stuff, you know, that, that could be dealt with at some other point, man. He needs to be in the gym playing basketball and helping his team win. That's what it's about. All that extra gibberish and all that outside noise, man. We can let all those people talk about that. That's what social media is for. You come in the gym and play basketball. Hey, do you want to hear from the uh, reigning defending uh, champion? Uh, yeah, I guess we have to, man. We have to show him love. I, mean, I, need, to figure, I need to figure out how he got this championship built. Hey, maybe he'll tell us. Game. Um, Hell, James Harden, the team did to four points in the second half. Talk about your activity throughout the game, but specifically in the second half, the adjustments that you made, especially against Harden and holding the Nets to 34 points in the second half. Um, I, wouldn't, I, would, I would say it was a great team defense, also followed by great coaching by uh, Mose. Uh, he put us in the right position. You know, he stayed you know, on us, telling us what to do, and you know, kept us ready on all their plays. Uh, I just try to, you know, uh, make it hard for him. Um, I feel like I got hit with a screen every possession, but uh, I, I feel like everybody on the team did a good job of rotating and, you know, um, making it tough for him. Brad? Yeah, Dorian, how would you evaluate your season up to tonight? And uh, do you think tonight was one of your, was your best defense, your best individual performance? Um. You know, I feel like uh, tonight was a you know, uh, good performance. I mean, it's always good when you win. But uh, I feel like my season been um, uh, up and down. Uh, every time I get hot, uh, every time I get to rolling individually, uh, you know, we, something happen. Either COVID or we have a eight game break. So, uh, but we just gotta stay with it. Uh, if I'm making shots, missing shots, it don't matter. As long as I'm trying to bring that energy. Uh, you know, offense rebounds, playing defense, doing all the little stuff. Hey, Dorian, uh, what does it mean to not only just to you, but to the guys for all the work that you put in during the snowstorm, the practices that were primarily defensive oriented, 
to actually see the results that come from the hard work that is it you know kind of that that snowballing thing that you know once you actually see that it it can work that uh it makes you want to do it more no well man we just gotta find a way to enjoy you know stopping guys and i, I think we did that tonight um everybody on the bench you know we really got into it you know just flying around uh, we can guard you know um, but uh but we we the kind of team if you know the ball touching everybody's hands uh we tend to play harder so you know, we, we got to change to a defensive mindset and start enjoying stopping people. All right, Valencia. Hey, Dorian, I appreciate you taking the time tonight. Congrats on the win and receiving the defensive belt. I know you're a consistent and confident player, but how much does it add to your confidence knowing that your coaches and your teammates believe in your game too? Um, it feels good, you know, especially when um, you have, you've been having bad shooting games, um, like the last, well, I won't say the last, but uh, coming back from the little break. Um, everybody was just keeping the same energy, telling me to shoot it when I'm open. And, uh, you know, that feel good. You know, the defense, and as far as the defensive belt, uh, it's, I guess it's my first time getting it, so it feel good. But shoot, he's still finished with 29, so I don't know. <laughs> shoot, I don't know, y'all. <laughs> All right, um, and the last one will be Christian. Hey, how's it going, Dorian? Um, just a quick question for you, man. I'm, I'm curious if you can pinpoint any specific areas that you might have seen Chris Babs grow or maybe mature since his trade from New York to Dallas. Um, um, you say, have I seen him grow? Yeah. Um, I would say, yeah, as a, as a, I, I, I didn't really didn't know him. I only played him once in New York. Uh, so, and then he was hurt. But since he's been here, I would say he's been, he been great for us, uh, you know, especially, you know, we know he's struggling with his knee. Um, never want to talk about nobody pain, but you no, know, don't nobody know what he's going through. Um, I trust, I trust that he always want to play, you know, even when we telling him to chill, you know, if your knee hurt, just chill, he still want to play. So uh, we know he tough. We know he, he want to play if he can. So I'm just happy he was out there today to bring that energy. All right, awesome. Thanks, Dorian. Sir, may, may I ask one quick question here? Uh, Go ahead, sir. The Mr. floor is yours. GFS. Listen, so I know people will try to again poo poo because we always we're in the we're always in the mood to do that and downplay something all the time. But if DFS can stand there and speak on that, especially regarding KP, and if those guys in that locker room think he's tough, if, they, if they, these are the guys that are around him every day. Why is it so hard for us on the outside as fans and reporters and media members to get on board with what's going on? I understand we have to ask questions, but the guys who are directly tied to them, why? Why do we have to stop that? Uh, first, I want to uh, address this real quick. Um, I just found out that Gordon actually, he just uh, posted that he has cancer. Uh, oh, no. I want to let him know that I'm praying for him, man. And, uh, Hope you get better, man. Uh, that was a Absolutely. major shock to me, man. It actually put a tear in my eye because I've known Gordon for years. We used to work together. Uh, he's one of my guys, man. Big time Mary fan. But uh, yeah, man, uh, we gonna we gonna beat this together, man. So that's right. You hang in there. You hang in there, brother. But yes, back sir. to you, sir. Back to you, sir. Um, it's hard for people to go to said. Uh, Go go that direction with KP because uh, it's a if you don't play you're not you you're you're soft and we and Chris Arnold talked about that the other day about the same thing with dirt you know for years people same people that that uh, were call I know a lot of people that were calling Dirk soft now all of a sudden oh Dirk's a goat Dirk's the goat yeah Dirk is a goat right. I, I know right. a lot of people like that. So yeah, me too. If they were to win more games and maybe get to like a what's the name? It wouldn't. It'd go out the window. So it's, it's about it's about how far they go as a team. So the team the team success will determine how people look at KP. Right. Right. Well, I yeah. think that's so unfair, man. That's so unfair. That's the reason why 
that's the reason why that uh that uh that number nine that will wear shoulder pads from time to time. He took the same criticism because the overall team success wasn't there. So therefore, he wasn't this. He wasn't that. When numbers and statistics show that, yes, he was every bit of what we thought he was, which is very good. So I just hate to know KP stuck in that position, man. I I just really. You know, your teammates are not – they're going to stand behind you and they're going to support you. I get all that. And, you know, they're going to cover for you. You know, that's what they're supposed to do. But at the same time, I think those guys in that locker room believe in them, man. And I just think it's unfair that we as, you know, media and reporters and fans and whatever, we all just want to <laughs> – I don't think I necessarily, I don't think I necessarily <laughs> put him in the same sense. I was making a point. <laughs> I was trying to make a point. He he doesn't want KP to prosper, man. <laughs> yeah, no, no, prosper. not not at all. All right, so we got Tim up next. This is the last one. Tim, Tim is the last interview. Good evening, Tim. Congrats on the win tonight. Uh, Dorian Finney Smith got the defensive player of the game. How good was it to see him active on both ends of the floor and being able to play one of his better defensive games and all around games tonight? I mean, uh, that's what Dodo does, man. Um, it's nothing new. Uh, we know that he's going to bring it every single day, every single game, whether it's practice or in the game. So, you know, hats off to him. He definitely deserved it. It's going against a prolific uh, player, future Hall of Famer of this game. And uh, um, all you can do is do the best you can to contain him and just try to be as, as aggressive as you can without fouling. <coughs> and that tonight. Hey, Tim, uh, it, it seems like you know, since the snowstorm, from an offensive standpoint, there's been a, been a lot more aggression from everybody as far as just taking the ball into the paint, getting your paint touches to sort of set up everything else about your offense. Is, I know there's been a lot of talk about the work you guys did defensively, but has this become more of a mindset as well for your team? Yeah, I believe so. And, uh, I mean, I know myself and a couple of the guys shoot the ball uh, – our three point shooters, but also uh, we're both we're, we're really good at driving the ball as well. And and um, I think just taking that time off when the snowstorm hit, uh, everybody just basically did a reality check as far as um, knowing how good we really can be when we're unselfish and when we're um, out there playing with, for one another. And uh, we've been doing that ever since. So um, during this stretch of game, so I mean, very happy, very excited that we can continue to do that. And like I said, everything happens and goes well when you have your full roster. Callie? Hey, Tim. And it seems like in the last bunch of games, Luca and Jalen have gotten a chance to play together on the court more often. So I'm curious, how would you kind of describe their relationship or their friendship off the court? I mean, everybody gets to get, gets along with one another off the court. Uh, not only Luca and JB, uh, um, I guess it's just them. I think it's just them being able to play with one another out there on the floor because they've been here the longest to do so. So uh, um, they do a great job of just feeding off one another out there on the floor. And I mean, but I mean, everybody, everybody gets along with one another out there. So uh, it's kind of hard to say. Chris? All right, Tim, congrats on the win. So, uh, you know, you you've you've embraced the role of coming off the bench, and can you talk about how important it is to be able to play with everyone on the team? Because I know sometimes when being a starter, you may not play with certain guys in the rotation, but your ability to adjust to play with different guys. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just uh, a little bit just has to do with that mindset that I had when I was in Atlanta, coming off the bench for the majority of that time before I became a starter, and. Uh, uh, just being able, you know, you're going to play with the with your second group, but also knowing that uh, you have to shift roles when you're playing with three or four of the other starters that come on the floor with you. So, um, I mean, I'm just trying to be a veteran and do the best I can uh, with the minutes that I'm given, and uh, just try to go out there and provide for my teammates in a positive way. Okay, the last one will be Davi Day. Hey Tim, my question is about Porzingis. Um, Coach said he's been play, he, he played probably his best game so far. Uh, what have you seen from him differently in the last, let's say, ten days when since you know the snowstorm? Uh, I mean, um, you know, K 
KP is, you no, know, he's very unique. Uh, I've been with him probably the longest out of anybody on the team. And uh, just being able to, to see a guy at 7'2", 7'3", with his ability to put the ball on the floor, block shots, you know, to shoot long threes, um, it's kind of rare. So uh, he's just been doing an amazing job of just staying ready. And when, uh, you know, he, you know, he really wants to play when he's sitting out, but uh, it's, it's, it's great when he gets back out there on the floor and we know he's gonna bring that energy and that mindset on both ends of the floor to be in attack mode the whole entire time. And uh, that's what we need from the big fella. And we're happy that uh, he's doing so. Okay, awesome. Thanks. Well, that was Tim uh, Hardaway right there. Uh, I, ju I just realized he has been with K KP the longest. That is that is a factual statement yeah. from him. Out of everybody that's on the team, absolutely. Okay, so uh, what are you doing right now? What are you doing? What are you doing right now? What do you, what what is that for? Oh, <laughs> what what is that for? I'm just trying to figure out what we're doing here. Hey, I, that that is by way of uh, I didn't realize I had two different videos going here, so I had a whole another group of comments going on the other side, and uh, from our conversation earlier where you were telling me about Seth and uh, and uh, Richardson, uh, someone said that Josh Richardson is trash. This is one of those uh, Lakers fans. Uh, you know, so they just feel like they can just chime in and say whatever the hell they want to say because they're on top of the world. Well, it's funny you bring Josh Richardson up because uh, Mike's here, and uh, I had a conversation with Mike, and I asked some other uh, Maverick, uh, some other Maverick media friends. Mm. Uh, it's been reported that the San Antonio Spurs are shopping one DeMar DeRozan and uh, Lamarcus Aldridge. Now, I know that Jeff Cavanaugh at JC1053 on Twitter has told me personally. He's not in on uh he's not in. He's not buying that. He doesn't want DeMar DeRozan here because we need guys who shoot three pointers, okay? So he's right. he's not in on DeMar DeRozan. But uh I think I think we need to go back and reevaluate the situation and, and look at this. And I think I might I might be willing to want to trade uh DeMar DeRozan, Josh Richardson for DeMar DeRozan right now. Just straight up. If I could get it straight up. Uh, listen. I, now you know me. I'm a Josh Richardson guy. Okay, I am a Josh Richardson guy. I'm are, you a big, guy are you or are you a uh, kick doors guy? Which one are you? Just trying to. You know, out. man, I, I'm a fan of the kick doors uh, personally. That's just me. But uh, no, I like Josh Richardson, man. I like uh, the attitude he brings to the team and everything, man. He's got some dog in him. He's just not one. He's he's not a prolific scorer. He'll never be a prolific scorer. He's not the scorer that Demar Derozan is now. If you ask me if I have an opportunity to add DeMar DeRozan to this basketball team, uh, well, I might be inclined to go ahead and say, hey, let's do it. Because I'm all about adding more pieces that will help Luka. If if you tell me we roll into the playoffs, I don't care what team we are, and I have Luka Doncic and I have DeMar DeRozan out there, who these are proven guys that can play and they can score. They can all create shots for themselves. And KP hopefully is out there. And then we have a mixture of these other guys, man. I like our chances to play against anybody. Uh, not saying we'll beat anybody like that, but it's, it's just you can't argue with having more and more talent, especially guys who can put the ball in the basket. Uh, oh no, you can't have talent here because talent means yeah, talent means you take it away from Luka. You know, if you're a good rebounder. You're getting in, you're getting in the way of those triple doubles. Yeah, you know, well, if you're a school, you know, if you, I mean, say if you're a rebounder like Andrew Drummond, you're in the way. Andre Drummond, yeah. you're in the way. If you're yeah. if you're a rebounding and scoring guy like Julius Randle, you're no fit here because you're in the way. You're so you're taking is, away. So who is fit here? Just somebody that's not a good basketball player? Well, uh DeMar DeRozan is more uh we'd have to be concerned about DeMar DeRozan because he's gonna come in here, he's gonna put up a lot of shots. And you know, that takes away from Luca getting getting his 20, 20 to thirty points a night uh, and his triple doubles. So Man, yeah, see I, Mike. See this right here? See this right here? This doesn't fit with Dallas right here. Him having yeah. 32 points, 11 six tonight. Oh no. Oh no, we can't have that. Those are those are Luca Nike numbers. We need that from Luca, not this guy. He's gonna come up. If he's coming over here to do this, he needs to stay in San Antonio. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. We're not doing That's that right. here. You're not That's doing right. that here, nope. pal. Nope. No, those nope. those numbers are only reserved for Luca. 
Yeah, how dare you try to cross over 14 points tonight? Don't do it. Don't you do it. Oh, wait. I think Mike wants to give up poor genius for DeMar DeRozan. No, I can't do that. I'm sorry. Well, I'll I tell you what. That. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I would start not throwing Porzingis in, but if it came down to it, I might would do it. Is San Antonio giving us a first in return along with DeMar DeRozan? Yeah, I need. Uh, well, no, they're not going to give it their first, but they'd have to give me. They'd have to give me probably one or two more players. Okay. You like some of the guys over there? They got. I I had to go through the roster. They got some guys that that are. Uh, that are that do it. He said Porzingis and Richardson for DeRozan and, and Murray. DeJounte Murray. That's why I have to have him in that move. Okay. Okay. DeJounte okay. Murray is a baller, man. Okay. And uh, Spurs, Spurs might be driving. I don't know if the Spurs are trying to rebuild. They might want a draft pick up, up off us for that, too. We can't give up I any more draft picks. No, that's, that's a uh, I, can give you, I can give you a second rounder, uh, Spurs, but that's all I can do for you. Can't give you. We, we got to be done giving our first round picks. Man. The only way, the only way I would say I'd be okay with giving a first round pick is if you told me we were getting somebody in off season like Kawhi that 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 will say we don't need to go through that. That's the only way. Mm. Well, you don't have to worry about that. He's too good of a player, so don't have to worry about that at all. Oh yeah. Oh well, he. I mean, this guy Kawhi, he would really get in the way of what Lucas going up got going on. We yeah. definitely don't want him here. Yeah. Oh no. Can't have Not that. No, 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 no. Too much star power. Far too much star power. Okay, Billy. So let's take a look at the schedule before we get out of here. Uh, the Mavs are going to play the um, Orlando Magic on Monday night. Okay. And then on Wednesday, they're going to play the Oklahoma City Thunder. And uh, that's it. We're going to be on break till then. Okay. For the All Star break, can, I think we can take both of those games. That would be okay. That would be okay, huge. Mike. Mike's got a point here. We can give up some of those guys that we drafted, mm. and, uh, to get to uh, get Demar Derozan. You know, Greg Popovich, man, him and Rick Carlisle seem to have a pretty good uh, relationship. I, I think Greg they, but I, and I think they want to get up off of uh, off of uh, his contract too, DeRozan. and they know they're not going to sign a vet. Derozan, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be opposed to it, man. If I could get Demar Derozan here uh, at a pretty reasonable, you know, deal, I'd, I'd go ahead and get him. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. On uh, when we come back from the uh, from the uh, All Star game, we have the San Antonio Spurs on that Wednesday night. Okay. okay. So you thinking you thinking uh, Demar Derozan could just uh, instead of and that's here in Dallas, mm -hmm. instead of uh, you know. Getting on the on the bus to go back to the uh, San Antonio, you just stay here. Just stay here, man. Look, we got a nice little hotel for you right across the street. Got some great realtors who will help you get settled and everything. And yeah, uh, we can have a jersey for you. They might be at the and they might it might be some realtors at the AAC that night. Yeah, who knows, man? Yeah, yeah. who knows? Yeah. We, yeah. we get you taken care of, and we'll get you some yeah. season tickets for the Cowboys if you need it. Whatever you need. Mr. Well, Dwell, hold we'll on. get you set up. Let's not go, let's not go too far here. That's that's hey, not look, easy to get. We can get him set up. We can get him set up. He's got money. We can get him set up. Okay. Okay. Well, that's funny because and then after that, we're gonna see they're they're gonna take on um they're gonna take on the Thunder again after that. Mm -hmm. And then they're gonna play the Nuggets. Oh man, they got a whoa, hold on. Let me tell you what the Mavs got here out of the gate coming off of uh All Star. Okay, let me read this down to you. Spurs. Okay. Thunder, Nuggets, Clippers twice, and Trailblazers twice. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah. We need KP. We need to make sure he's out there, man. We're going to need to be full go. Now, okay, now if you're telling me that we sent KP for, for that reason, I might, I might, I might understand what we're doing here. Mm. Yeah, I, who knows, man? We're going to need him. Uh, man, that's a tough stretch. That's why I say, man, we got to get these next two games. We got to get these next two games. Uh, we have to have those. What uh, about James? What about James Johnson, Josh? I don't think anybody's going to take James Johnson back because of how uh that how high how high his contract is. Don't think anybody's going to do that. For that would be for Compella. you. Guys. That would be for you, guy uh, Moten. Oh, for Clint Capella. 
So if you do that, then you're yeah, going to yeah. Tell us the story yeah, they don't even want to pay John. Him. They don't even want to pay John Collins. So I know they're not. They're not going to take James Johnson. His contract is too high. Yeah, I don't know if you can find a way to get Clint Capella here. I mean, uh, that's another. That's a big guy that can run the floor, shot block, and finish at the rim. So real quick, Billy, uh, Orlando, we got a dub or an L. I got a dub against the Magic. Okay. Okay. Uh, the, then after that, you got the thunder. Hey, hey, Moten, Moten, we're not doing any more of this one-year deal crap. Nope, no, no. I need long term. Yeah. yeah. No. Mm -mm. Yeah, you're unless not. For, you're, you're not for the company. unless you're a veteran player. It's it. Oh, you're saying Johnson on a one-year? Yes, it's a one-year deal, but it costs a lot of money to put him on the cap. There's, it's not worth it to take him back for one year for the money he's making. Yeah, and he's not really somebody that's somebody that's gonna really just help you put you over the top in the playoffs. I mean, but that that's an expiring contract, though. I mean, yeah, but nobody's gonna take that deal back. The Mavericks yeah, took the Mavericks took him because the Mavericks put out at the beginning of the season we're looking to take guys on on one year deals to uh, free up money for a uh, free agency this year, right? So and uh, who who are we trying to trade him to? Atlanta's not one of those teams that are looking to free up money uh, this year. Yeah, sure would be nice to have him. Would you trade yes. Richardson and Cleveland for? Yeah. Yes, yes, in a heartbeat. Immediately. <laughs> yes, immediately. Yes, yes. It's capital Y -E -S. Yes. Yeah. I don't think that's enough to get him though. No, if it was, I you got to swing that deal immediately. So you gave me a dub for Orlando. Yes. And you gave me a dub for uh Josh. I mean not for Josh Richard. For um, for, the Thunder. for the Thunder. Yeah, yeah. I think the Mavericks can finish out before the all-star break with two uh two more wins. That would, you know, uh that would put them in what they beat who was it? we beat the Celtics, then we lost to who was it after that? Philly. Philly, okay, lost to yeah, Philly. The, yeah, the game that we put at your feet because you lost yeah. in that game. Yeah, yeah, well, they did that. Yeah, so you did do against, that. A win against the Celtics, and then you get one against the uh, Nets tonight, which nobody thought we would get. And then you turn around and you take. Well, the hold on now, hold on now. I'll give Tobias his credit. He did say that if if they play, uh, just one of them, the Mavericks should win this game. He did say that. I'll give yep. Tobias his just. Do. Well, yeah, and I mean we got it. So if we win these next two, then that means we won four out of the last five. That's a, a hell of a way. To close out the uh, for the All Star break, considering everything that's going wrong, look at the big picture with COVID and the KV, uh, KV, K, uh, KP being out, COVID, all these different things that are going on. Considering all circumstances, I think the Mavericks will be in a prime position to make a run in the second half, assuming you know health and you know whatever move they do or do not make. Uh, you know, I think they can be in position to battle for you know, like I said, that seven, eight, nine. You know that spot. Uh, thank you, Mike, for tuning in. Thank you, absolutely, um, absolutely, Mike. Um, yeah, so uh, we got to get up out of here. But uh, before we go, uh, I'd like to send my uh, condolences out to everyone at ninety-seven point one, the Eagle, today. Mm -hmm. As uh, we all learned that Russ Martin passed away this weekend. Uh, I met Russ Martin one time. And it was out at Texas Motor Speedway, and we were in the Speedway Club together. Uh, from what I met, from what I found from him, he was a nice guy, um, pretty cool. I didn't know he was battling the demons that they said he was um, after today, as they were talking about it on air. As I turned it on and listened, but uh, he's one of those guys that's a staple in, in radio and in Dallas. And uh, to see him gone, uh, that's a that's a that's a mighty blow. That's a mighty blow to. Uh, to the industry and the city of Dallas. Yeah. Because he's Huge. been doing radio here forever. So I uh, definitely want to send my uh, condolences over to the 97.1 uh, Eagle family um, for Russ Martin, who who they found unresponsive in, uh, in his house this morning. And of course, he passed away. So yeah, I just wanted to, wanted to put that out there. But yeah, man. Uh, so we'll be back here. Uh, what's that? Monday night. 
after the uh, after the Orlando Magic. And uh, let me see what time that game is. I think that's a a seven thirty start. No, it's a six o'clock start. Okay. On Monday, and then on Wednesday, it's going to be a seven thirty start. So get a little early post game going. Um. We're not getting rid of Ter- Tim Hardaway Jr. Tim Hardaway Jr. is on the last year of his deal. They're not going to take that. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. is here to stay unless he can't sign up, unless they can't reach a deal, which I hope they do reach a deal because I want Tim back. Six, man. But, yeah, so we'll be back here Monday night, and uh, we'll be doing – we'll get a uh, post game for the uh, Mavericks and uh, Orlando Magic. But uh, after that also – Anybody tuned in, make sure you go to our YouTube page. Search BFB DFW or BFB Mavs. Click on the show and uh, subscribe to the channel. That's all we want you to do is subscribe. But, uh, yeah, so we'll see you Monday night. And uh, if we don't see you around, then we'll see you around.